this afternoon, I am excited that I get to introduce some beautiful women who have joined us here on the set. And of course, it's about, uh, you know, our music space, our creative arts space. And uh, joining us this uh, afternoon is Chioma Onuchuku, head of uh, Tune Core West and East Africa. Hope I pronounced it well. Yeah, very close. Chama Onuchuku. Onuchuku. <laughs> Onuchuku. Onuchuku. Yeah. Okay. Onuchuku. And also Elizabeth Ajman, the senior brands manager of uh, International Tune Core. Uh, welcome, Elizabeth. Ajman, you see how he said it? <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank and you happy you. holidays to you, though. How's it going? It's going well. Uh, fun and work. At the okay. same time, <laughs> one hour, okay. so I'm not getting the the accent. The Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I mean, really, I've been trying to think about a tune core um, for a lot of us who are probably hearing this for the first time. Mm -hmm. Tune core. Let me start with you, Chioma. Okay. Uh, what, what is tune core in the first place? Okay, uh, tune core. We're an international music distribution platform, okay. and we also offer publishing and main. Uh, we're very DIY, so what that means is you know, do it yourself. Okay. So it's a platform that allows artists to easily get their music on streaming platforms like your Spotify's, mm -hmm. you know, your YouTube's, your App Apple Music and, and Co. Oh. So in essence, that's really what we are, um, a distribution platform that offers publishing administration as well. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, Elizabeth, as you deal with um, our space here in Africa, um, how is the attraction to Tunko like are people getting to understand what Tunko, you know, is for, uh, I mean, over the years? I think it's getting better for sure. Mm. Um, what we're uh, still experiencing is the lack of education when it comes to music distribution. Okay. How it actually works to get on a streaming platform. Um, you know, when I grew up and especially like my cousins actually, the way they consume music is to YouTube music, right? So we think we could just go on YouTube and upload our songs there and I was good. So the music distribution part, that's kind of like the education part that's lacking. So that's where Tune Core is coming in, and that's where we kind of like create workshop networking events mm. to really make sure that we get the education part of like the route to get your music mm. out on streaming platforms. So I'd say little by little, little we're by getting, little there, we're getting yeah. there. Yeah. Mm. But, but when, as you deal with um, artists and their managers, and now everybody wants to put their songs on, you know, these streaming platforms, yeah. and they do not have the knowledge about it or they are doing it wrongly, mm. what really is the right process to be able to get your music distributed to these platforms using the tune core way if you can just share with us i mean i'll say first off do your research so you understand do you understand the different ways that you can get your music out there because what i found is um because it's like some i don't want to use the word illegal but very <laughs> non-beneficial ways <Okay>. in africa <laughs> you know the whole promote your music kind of a thing pay mm -hmm. us this amount and you know we'll help you blue kind of statement so um you kind of need to have a basic understanding of all right uh, yeah. what services are out there for me especially as an emerging independent musician mm. do you understand and then with tune core we have a very robust website with a lot of information of how to get your music out there okay. go all the way from preparing your release to making sure you know it goes through the content team gets approved by our content team to then get to the stores what i mean by that is because all the stores have the various formats okay. that they accept mm -hmm. you understand and within a certain type of frame time frame so that information mm -hmm. is on there for you just to make sure that you have you know you have the best release yeah. um process for your music okay yeah well, well I'm, I'm glad you mentioned research so why should we have this conversation about music distribution publication in africa why is it important I mean, we're seeing what's happening with African music globally. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why that's happening is because the music is available on streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. And not just streaming platforms, but it's also available on social media. Yeah. Yeah. And distribution is also distributed into social media. Mm -hmm. Like with TuneCore, you can get music on TikTok, on YouTube, mm -hmm. on Instagram, Snapchat. Okay. We see how important social media is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope that kind of answers your question yeah. too. It's important that you understand, you know, why you should be putting your music on distribution platforms yeah. in, in alongside every other thing you do with your music as an artist. Mm. Again, I always like to say, look at it as a business. You want to create various revenue aspects. Distribu distributing your music can also get you royalties as well. Yeah. So if you're pushing on social media, you also want it to be linked to people finding it, say it goes viral mm -hmm. on TikTok. Mm -hmm. The idea is, okay, you want it to go viral on TikTok yeah. and you want people to leave TikTok 
to go to the streaming platforms mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to add it to their playlist yeah. and continuously listen to it. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. your answer just makes me understand that indeed it's very important because most artists know to put their songs on Apple, Spotify, mm-hmm. but not really on Snapchat, especially when a sound yeah. is trending. Mm-hmm. I remember when Otan came, Sarko mm-hmm. Dez Otan, mm-hmm. and everybody was using it, but it wasn't on Snapchat. Yeah. I wanted to use it so bad, but it wasn't there. It's, it's just recently that they added the it to other, Snapchat. Okay. And even, you know, sometimes there's a part of the music that is trending. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. let's say the chorus or a hook. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you will never get it on Snapchat. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, these kind of uh, conversation is mm-hmm. very, important. very important. I'm yeah. sure that a lot of people do not have yeah. that knowledge. And you know, yeah. part of, again, I don't know why that happened, why it wasn't on Snapchat. But again, maybe for him, um, which is the beauty of distribution, because it offers you a dashboard to view your analytics. Mm-hmm. What I mean by that is to see what countries are really enjoying your music. Mm. Music, okay. Exactly. What countries, maybe what continents, like where is it performing and what mm-hmm. platforms? Mm-hmm. So for all you know, perhaps you're a Snapchat user, mm-hmm. yeah. but most of his fans are on TikTok. Yeah. yeah. Do you understand? So he may yeah. have made that executive decision with his team okay. to say, okay, put yeah. it out here yeah. without realizing that there are fans on there. On the yeah. Do you understand that mayor? Yeah. So that mm-hmm. could be. Okay. On, the, on the back of that, um, Elizabeth, you have like a uh, background uh, yeah, and expect in social media and strategic planning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in this era where social media is everything how important is it for artists to be able to build their social media especially their fan base and then connect to their listeners how important is it for artists to know these things like your question i already gave my answer away so like <laughs> <laughs> so i think in this uh, time and day we are in there is no way for an artist not to be on social media mm-hmm. unless you blew up before mm-hmm. and then you can do a jay-z and be like i'm good <laughs> but i think <laughs> But I think now in this time and age, you have to get there. So mm-hmm. I think social media is, is a gift for artists to really build that fan base. Mm-hmm. You can start small. You can really start with family members. You can create close friends. Mm-hmm. And then, like, you know, trying to get your music out there. And I think, as Shema was mentioning, there's TikTok, there's Snapchat, there's YouTube Shorts, where you have the momentum to go viral mm-hmm. based on the content you're putting out there mm-hmm. and based, based on yeah. the music you're putting out there. Yeah. So as we were saying before, there was, like, a snippet of Sarko Dias, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Sound that went viral, not his mm-hmm. entire song, yeah. but that always showed like how important it is sometimes to just put snippets out there yeah. to test the waters, yeah. mm-hmm. and that's the special thing that you could do with social media mm-hmm. and social platforms in that mm-hmm. sense, right? Mm-hmm. So like testing the waters. Oh, it didn't go well. Who cares? Next time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Back in the days when something didn't go well, we almost cancelled out of those placements mm-hmm. that took your CD down, and it's like okay, bye bye. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. And nowadays it works a bit differently, where you can always come back and yeah. try to. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, grow with your fans as well. Yeah, but I, I, I sometimes th- this is a problem for some artists in in an era where it's like a digital marketing strategy, where everything has to be on social media. Some artists tend to forget traditional media, and sometimes I feel like it's a major problem for because of our culture. Because in Ghana, you see people listening to the radio, um, reading the newspapers, watching television 24 seven. They don't even go on the social media platform. Elsewhere, since like, you're an expert with social media and strategic planning, how, how is it done with other countries? How are they able to navigate between social media and traditional media? So that's a very good question. And again, um, I would say people also don't know about publishing. Mm-hmm. So with traditional media, you own it yourself, right? Okay. It's mm-hmm. owned. You decide mm-hmm. where you want to put certain okay. things. You okay. decide you want to say, hey, I want my music on Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. With traditional media, as you were mentioning, radio, TV, mm-hmm. that's not the case. Okay. Unfortunately, right now, I can't walk into a radio station and be like, here, I'm pitching my music. Can mm-hmm. you please play it? Okay. A lot of people think that's the way it is. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's not. So okay. I would say, depending on the market and depending on the strategies that are based in those markets, mm-hmm you have to have a publishing company that kind of like pitches your music and sync okay. mm-hmm. for your music to be able to, on, be, to be on radio mm-hmm. and TV, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think that's kind of like the major issue that people don't, still don't understand yeah. how that works. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think when it comes to other companies or countries, sorry, uh, for example, in Germany, a lot of artists already are aware of that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, radio stations still get pitched music every yeah. day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I think if you are very serious about your music, you know that you need to have publishing mm-hmm. 
to go into that route. Yeah, okay. And that's the difference. So I think that's development and understanding and yeah. going back to education that we are still trying to do within those, those okay. markets. I, th I think the first time I, I saw tune call was Afro Chella, now Afro Future, mm -hmm. where when you get to the, the venue, they are on the other side and the mm -hmm. main stage and artists yeah. get to yeah. um, um, sing on their platform and everything. And yeah. I realized that it's more of like on your Instagram page, it's like make music, uh, uh, is it uh, gets paid and keep it 100 mm -hmm. yes uh, how, how has the relationship been for um, that platform because it's a huge platform for talent to come and showcase what they have and especially staying real to their root being on board with them how has the relationship been so far and how is everything going I think it's amazing I mean Afro Future you know, former Afro Future they've been mm -hmm. doing an amazing work you know in, in terms of like showcasing African mm -hmm. talent, do you mm -hmm. understand? And I think with this year's, and even the previous year, you know, they allow for that educational initiative to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So where you're able to get artists, you know, in the same space mm -hmm. with, of course, key opinion leaders or yeah. like thought leaders mm -hmm. to yeah. have conversations and of course have panel discussions about pressing matters. Mm -hmm. You know, the panel conversation are not just, oh, pointing out our problems or also discussing how do you think we could mitigate this mm -hmm. thing, do you understand, mm -hmm. to also yeah. support artists. But particularly this year, I love the fact that, we, you know, we kind of switched up the partnership mm -hmm. to also have like a stage. Yes. I'm big <laughs> on, you know, it's good to have the education, but then a lot of times, you know, artists are looking for a platform yeah. mm -hmm. to visibility yeah. to be discovered. You yeah. know, we're talking about different media, traditional yeah. media, social media, yeah. those are all forms of this, um, you know, um, visibility and an op opportunity for them to be discovered. So is stage performances yeah. as well, mm -hmm. you get. So this year we also have our own tune course stage, actually starting today, yeah. we should be there right now. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I yeah. Think on your list, there's last May, there's Jay Zeno, like mm -hmm. those who perform, I think yeah. the list on the flyer, oh, were different okay, artists okay, who Yeah, we had some like artists. Yes, yeah, some artists yeah. yeah. who yeah. be yeah. performing. So yeah, so we have something like that also mm -hmm. just to give them the opportunity to, to perform. Do, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Liz, you can also chime in here as well. Well, I, I didn't want to take the mic. Yeah, you, so um, you know we have that. So it's just we're doing both a combination of like networking, education, and mm -hmm. of course the platform for mm -hmm. you know the artists also perform yeah. in front of a yeah. very huge crowd yeah. as well. Um, yeah, we're really excited. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 before Harry, last one. Before um, so I'm I get the whole platform where artists have to put in the work and be creative and be sort of like just doing the music and tune call will take everything like is it like the paperwork, the royalties? No, and so we don't operate like a label were okay. very subscription okay. based. Mm -hmm. Now we okay. do have like other services and of course one of our plans is like okay. a commission base mm -hmm. but no I think that's just the beauty of it. There's nothing wrong with being with a label mm -hmm. but at the end of the day there are people who perhaps they've been with a the label they didn't like the experience they'd rather be independent yeah. so that they have full control yes. they'll mm -hmm. stick with yeah. the likes of like a tune core mm -hmm. or up coming artists maybe they desire to be with a label okay. but they just haven't gotten the opportunity yeah. do they just stay stagnant not put their you need True. to do the work as well so they will use you know something like tune core so we operate subscription base okay. um mm -hmm. yeah okay. so you just pay like an annual mm -hmm. one-time annual fee yeah yeah that's just a renewed every, yeah everyone. and you get unlimited releases so that's kind of how it works so there's no paperwork okay you know you own you know 100 percent of your royalties you oh, know wow. Except for a few few services, I like, I mean, I like yeah, there is no <laughs> contract. We don't own your masses. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you're independent, you're independent. We're just like, we're like a partner supporting you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Yeah. But uh, any latest development or features that has been added to the TuneCore platform? Yeah. Artists. Yeah, I think the one that will come to mind is something called Splits. Mm -hmm. This has been like most desired i'll mm -hmm. say so what splits is it gives artists the opportunity to split the royalties the end among um numerous or multiple collaborators mm -hmm. so rather than doing it manual where okay space to one person and then you're doing transfer mm -hmm. or you know trying mm -hmm. to send you, you do it from the tune core platform okay. you just invite invite in the collaborators and once mm -hmm. the royalty comes and it just splits you know to okay. them based on of course what has been agreed on the split sheet and the collaboration agreements okay. as well but, okay. yeah. but generally, is publishing expensive? Is publishing, you mean in terms of fees? Yeah. Um, I will talk from, I will speak from the tune course side. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have, there's going to be a payment made, like a one-time payment. What that is used for is to have your catalog, and of course you as an artist, registered with all the PROs around the world. There's over a hundred of, of them. Okay. Now you as an artist can be your own publisher, mm -hmm. but 
we're talking about 100 PRs oh, and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. collect, so there's performance rights organizations and collective management organizations around the world. That's a lot of work. That's a yeah. lot of work. Yeah. Do you understand? So that is that one-time fee to get you registered. And then mm -hmm. we have where, aside the subscription, a commission structure mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. publishing, mm -hmm. which is like 15% for certain things, and then one is like 20%. Mm -hmm. So again, it depends on your pockets. For some yeah. people, mm -hmm. it could be expensive. I think it's right. It's nicely placed. Nicely you know. placed. It's nicely, nicely placed. It's not crazy. It's not crazy expensive yeah. Yeah. Royalties so it's not like it's so. there's some kind of like a gatekeeping where mm -hmm. oh it's only yeah. accessible to mm -hmm. x type of artists no yeah. if you really want it you can get it so it's anyone not, like in ghana yes. like, from the a-list to like the alternative anyone artists. yes so no, it's, it's I mean, affordable I, I was going to ask about um you know whether that was expensive just as a tax but elizabeth as we wrap up on this um how are you getting to the to the artists to the managers to the various teams to make sure that they buy into what you call is you know offering them uh, just share with us i think um because we are diy mm -hmm. so we don't really seek out artists in terms of like hey use tunecore it's kind of more of a we do like brand marketing in terms of like awareness mm -hmm. okay. where we are out there again we work with Afrofuture future in terms of brand awareness making sure that in the market we are known um doing press runs mm -hmm. but at the same time we are working with artists who are a bit bigger and um, as Choma mentioned as well, we call them key opinion leaders. So there are certain artists we work with who can also get the word out there for us. Okay. So, but there is no a and r -ing in terms of like, hey, use TuneCore, because that's what our um, mother company does believe in that sense. So there is a belief also science artists and supports them in all ways. Um, and TuneCore is really much DIY, so you don't seek out artists in that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Finally, um, Chema, anything that you know you want to add to um, our conversation that we probably didn't touch on before we wrap up? Um, I think we really touched on everything, mm. but I mean, we're really excited to be here. I mean, this is um, year three, mm -hmm. you know, that we've had like a big activation, of course, in partnership yeah. with Afrofuture. Um, we're hoping to be here again. Do we want to do the... <laughs> do we want to yes. do the... Yes. Yes. Do, 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 do the... I'm, I'm an Afro feature buyer, so I'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we're really excited. Um, we have a lot of work that we're doing here. There's still so much more, mm -hmm. you know, to be done, especially with the African market. And, I'm, you know, we're really looking forward to it. And, yeah, you want to distribute your music. You're an independent artist. Come check us out. Yeah. Okay. 100%. Sure. All right. So, uh, you heard from our guests there from Tune Code. They're not leaving us just yet. I quickly yeah. want to touch on uh, Four Hours and Twelve, you know, before we go, uh, because today I was there. Um, you know, some judge was there. So let's just watch a few of the excerpts from this afternoon when I got to the Aquama village. And when we come back, we wrap it up. And that was the excitement at the Akoma Village as a lot of people turned up as it has been from day one to support Ifwa Santua Idionum who is attempting to break, I think she's broken it. Um, um, she's just going on, you know, as is being said that, you know, she's got to continue so they could make up for some of the stoppages and, and all of that. We're proud of you. And for a big shout out to your husband, though, Kofi Edo, the senior man, bless you. And all, all the guests who came through, Stumba was there today. Yeah. And a lot of other guests who came through, Ajiti and 
also I wish you the very very best and also shout to Bozoma St. John though the baddest workshop is happening at Kempinski and so ladies as we go social media handles where people can contact TuneCore yeah so you can find us on TuneCore.Africa okay. yeah follow us so you can keep in touch with everything that we're working on okay fantastic yeah. Exactly. If you have any questions, please reach out. I think that's the best way. People underestimate actually how quick we respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the best platform to reach out. Fantastic. And that was Elizabeth Adjaman and also Chioma Onu. Onu Chuku. Onu Chuku. Onu Chuku. Onu Chuku. Onu Chuku. No. Onu Chuku. Onu Chuku. No, let her mention it. Onu Chuku. Onu Chuku. Okay, and happy birthday to Daiwo Ado of our sound department. Today is your birthday, Daiwo. God bless you so much. Super, super amazing talent. Can sing and the heavens will come down. Yo, guys, go check him out on YouTube and his everything. Yeah, shout to you, Daiwo. And why? That's it. Yeah, I mean, today is Afro Future. I've, I've been outside. saying this and we are outside. I've been saying this. So everybody knows that I love Afro Future. So you guys should come out. When you get there, just make sure that um, if you're coming from the, uh, if you have a general access, immediately you enter, you see Tune Core on your right. Mm -hmm. Yes, before the main stage is ahead of you. So yep. make sure you have fun there. Um, <laughs> just shout out, be, be, mingle with the Venice everyone before you come to the main stage. Yeah. So we'll see you tonight and then tomorrow, David will be on stage. My <laughs> name is Anaya Tanoabuache. I did this with Harriet Adi and Desmond Okrokodan. So let's see the star boy Fede yep. and Chioma and Liz. Enjoy the rest of our programs.